Hi guys, this is Parin Shah. Welcome you all in a brand new video. How to calculate the intrinsic value part 2. With the fellow investors in the recent video, when we discuss how to calculate the intrinsic value and I also said downloadable template and that will also be link here in the description below updated. And with the stocks that we will discuss today, there are so many questions about okay parin great formula template but how do we know the growth rate how do we put earnings cash flows or something else into it how do we estimate the terminal value and that i say to all i'll make the another video so in this video we will go through four stocks unilever kroger nestle and tesla we will see what are the input figures that have to be set into this template and you will see how you figure out what is really adding value to you as a shareholder which is key for investing returns before we start i just wanted to wish you happy holidays merry christmas happy new year in advance i wish you all the best and i want to thank you so much because by liking subscribing or sharing this video that I make you are really really doing a great thing let's start with the stock analysis and I really hope I'll give as much value as I can because we will go into the details of this stocks what are the real contributors to creating shareholders value the first stock I want to discuss is Unilever it is the consumer goods company and I'm sure you use many of these products and if I would use probably this product then I would have a larger YouTube woman population as they say but apart from these jokes let's dig into the company of course very famous brands here so I think you are probably also using something that they make if you look at the long term stock chart the stock is clear compounder because since 1981 it was one dollar and now it's 58 plus the dividend so really constantly has been compounding over time over the last five years things haven't been great here buffett made an offer to buy them stock jump they did a lot of buyback were against buffett buying them We'll comment that bit later, but really the market exploded over the last years. They did it and that is also something to put into the intrinsic value calculation. So this is the table. You can download it. You can play here with the stock that we discussed and you can change the input inputs to see what and why and how you come to an intrinsic valuation depending on your discount rate depending on what is your expected return and then you say okay what is the intrinsic value let's see why for Unilever I use only the dividend and then a terminal value and nothing more first if you look at the Unilever it's a slow growing company so if you would listen to Peter Lynch he says avoid until it becomes or turn around or an asset play but still okay let's look at the Unilever when it comes to the company's sales growth has been really really sluggish over time uh, we have also depending on what they are looking at as a company presenting we have a declining sales growth speed but actually revenues turnover didn't grow there is a currency impact there is the euro strength then but they have sold the spread business so food revenue going down home care are equal and beauty and other care is going strongly up as they made an acquisition and they are forcing acquisition there Europe is declining in a sales the Americas let's say stable but they are selling and growing in emerging markets that is their focus for a growth plus they are doing acquisition many acquisition but also disposing of the lower margin business so that they can increase their margin and make their financial look much better however if you look at the acquisition 
given that there has been no revenue growth over time this is not something really value adding because there is a billion approximately a billion per year over the last 10 year that they have spent more on acquisition than they have received from disposal this means that their acquisition strategy is not ready for growth like we will see in the case later for kroger where acquisition really drive growth so their acquisition 1 billion extra that they spend it's something that comes out of their cash flow free cash flow uh, it is not really free cash flow it's just a maintenance cash flow and that is something you have to see when you are calculating the inputs for stock capital expenditure so what are you investing in a developing the business they decide to really lower them from 2 billion to bring it down to leave more cash flow to pay the dividend so when a company says okay we are not going to invest as we did earlier it is also sign of stagnating things plus something that again factors in on the cash flow if you look at that level the net funds the net funds were about what 6 billion euro 10 years ago and now we are down to minus 24 billion so that is a huge increase of that for a company that has not seen revenue growth okay what else than taking that for a cash flow cash flow they say have grown from 3 billion to current 6 billion but if i did at the 1 billion that they are investing in acquisition for a growth that is not growth then this also do- doesn't look that good and then of course we have the dividend constantly increasing increasing and now they need 4 billion euro per year just to cover the dividend this is morning star this is very nice start at morning star first let me just show you how to get it you go to the morning star we'll later discuss tesla you type in the ticker you get this open if you would if i would have a faster internet line would be great ratio full gear ratio data and then you get all these data here and it should be free so revenues revenue stagnating 51 billion euros 51 billion euros over the 8 years we have operating margins increasing a little bit as they are selling the bad business as a quite good business better business earning per share has grown about 50% over the last 10 years not stellar but they did grow dividends double but also the payout ratio increased from 60 to 70% the share went down approximately 10% but mostly here when they did everything they could to discourage buffet or others from buying so they went on spending spree operating cash flow almost double but they kept spending decrease and their free cash flows they say it's a 7 billion but i must say i do not agree and you will see now why as i said we have cash dividend that they are paying everything they can 4 billion for a cash they are increasing their debt so okay free cash flow but why then did you increase your debt by 20 billion 20 billion over the 10 years it's a 2 billion per year they didn't lower the number of shares outstanding significantly and we have seen that acquisition and disposal are on the acquisition side so this 7 billion where i take in the debt accumulated and that comes to 4 billion which tells me okay these guys have enough money to pay the dividend and therefore the dividend is what has to be used when making intrinsic calculation smart asses in august june this year they said we are going to boycott online media we are going to boycott we are pure heart of course and now they see their revenues declining because it's all about social media these days and now they return silently of what boycott who boycott no what so it is terrible management in my view plus now they have a fortunately new ceo but i remember in a 2017 when buffet wanted to buy them and the ceo went around saying how the bahuans of unilever because the stock jump when buffet made this offer was better than brexire blah 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 and 
we don't need let buffett do what we know and my feeling is the only reason why they left 143 billion didn't accept it because all the management when regio lehman fitch would come in would be fired because the management with the unilever such a big company so it's more about just keeping their jobs and keeping things stable the worst case scenario for them as they said for financial time was take over bid oh god forbid we give value to shareholder if shareholders would have gotten the money market capitalization 143 exactly what warren buffett was offering that was in a british pound so we are there 3 year have passed the market is up 50% unilever shareholder are up squared that is live let us look at our unilever table dividend yield is 1.65 i have assume in the normal case scenario 2% growth rate over the dividend over the next 5 years 2% over the following 5 years now discount rate so discount rate what is your expected return if it is 5% you can put 5% if it is 10% you can put 10% and then you use this value values to compare now with the terminal multiple how do you determine one more conservative you are the lower you put the terminal multiple because we don't know what will be the world look like in 2030 we don't know about the valuation we don't know anything but more conservative we are depending on how well we know the business what are our certainty in the business that's how we derive the growth rate that's how we derive what actually might be our assumption for the business so earnings cash flow dividend what is the real value creation of the business that in this case i decided it is just a dividend they don't create more values for shareholders so then you go for the terminal rate so terminal rate you can assume like it says equal to the market in a normal case scenario terminal rate is a 20 so the stock value would be 26 which is much much lower than the current value uh, if i put 5% discount rate we go little bit higher 4% discount rate so we are close to the current stock price which means that investor investing in a unilever could expect 4% which is close to the dividend and that is in the best case scenario if they can manage to invent growth of 5% something we put higher discount rate let's say 7% then we can expect if the company grows 5% plus the dividend if they grow the dividend 5% then plus a better multiple rate can be also a lower depending on what the market thinks but it has a big impact here the lower you go here the more conservative you are in a worst case scenario let's say the dividend has to decline there are dividend cuts terminal multiple is lower intrinsic value is really really bad so i put 30 chance for this scenario 1% chance for this best case scenario I really don't like Unilever so this is my estimation and you have you can play around here and see whether this fits for you if you like Unilever okay if you don't there are better companies and we are going to talk about them just now then i also something i wanted to show you these are my estimation and you can see estimation can be all over the place Let's look at the analyst estimation for Unilever for 2020. They estimate from earnings decline of 6.4 to earnings growth of 1% in 2021. This is analyst estimation the worst is minus 1 earnings and the best is 7% earnings. Of course, one year it's okay, but look at the thing of discrepancy here over a very long time. 
if i put dividend growth 10% 10% discount rate so is the same and terminal multiple 25 i get to double the intrinsic value and if you look at the analyst what they are saying we are there this is investing so you have to be flexible with all these inputs but then it's about comparing the quality qualitative sides of the business so with everything else the next stock in line with unilever we have nestle another amazing compounder over the years plus this is swiss franc the stock is traded in a new york otc in a europe and also in a switzerland so swiss franc have a strength in relation to other currency so this performance is even better over the years let's see what to put into a template for a nestle with the company i don't think i don't have to introduce you the brands or anything about the company we all know we all drink i love my nespresso so what else but i look at the cash flow statement there is a lot going on but just to simplify quickly morning star here is pretty pretty right so we have a cash flows free cash flow of around 11 billion swiss franc per year the revenues are declining but that's again in a swiss franc so global revenue as the franc strengthening they have seen declining revenues they are slowly growing but given the free cash flow that they used to do buyback and dividends if you look at the number of shares also not that big we will see later with the kruger how good it can get dividends have grown so they put out their free cash flow into dividend in this swiss franc that i show you as the franc is strengthening against the dollar the revenues are declining so i have look at the company in the case i said okay what is the value created so they are delivering those dividends from free cash flow so i think that the value created is the 11 billion in this case you can divide it by the number of sales but let's take the billion 11 billion I assume 2% growth rate, 2% organic growth rate over the years in the Swiss franc. That would be the dis great discount rate, 6% in this case because that gives me an intrinsic value close to the market. So I know uh, Nestle, I can expect return from around 6%. If you look at the market capitalization, 291 billion, which is in line with the intrinsic value of 5.5 percent perhaps and then we get close to the value the 11 11 billion almost 300 what's the dividend yield around 3 percent something so depending on what you expect from the company with 2 percent of growth you get to 5 percent growth 5 percent growth long term return which is almost double what unilever has stronger brands better quality i think with the Nestle, so from investing perspective, I would rather invest in Nestle rather than Unilever. Next stock, another compounder but much more volatile as we have seen a big jump, then here a crazy decline, then up. And it is a Kroger company, a very very interesting company. When this drop in 2017, after earnings, I put a link how the market is totally irrational and how Kroger will beat the market because this drop according to me back then was irrational a few months later the stock was already 50% up it went up and down up and down and now it's 50% up I think we have beaten the market since I did this but let's look at the fundamentals what the company is doing and what to put into our template if you look at the financials, unlike the other two companies, this is a growth, slow growth company. Let's say but from 80 billion dollars to 130 billion dollars, that's already something. Operating margin is volatile and that's why I also see the volatility. But positive earning per share, steady growth there. So they are doing something good, the dividend has in a triple over time with an equal payout ratio. That is very very important so they are not overspending on the dividend but what they did comparatively comparatively they lowered the number of shares by 40 percent over the 10 years that's staggering that's something really amazing 
and they are still spending now just to prove the new spending for a buybacks of a billion operating cash flow if you look at here if you look at the investment they make some acquisition and they scale their business and these also thanks to acquisition but free cash flow in a good year this is little bit covered more spending now okay if i look at the free cash flow i agree with what company says and we are at 1.5 billion conservatively on average they have increased their debt from 7 billion to 11 billion as they make this acquisition they acquire smaller companies they integrate them into their u system so they play on the efficiency of scale which is something that works and by acquiring smaller market i think i think i can still continue to grow so i think the company can still continue on a slow and steady growth but taking that making acquisition increasing profitability on efficiency of scale also on a branding i uh, look at also here the cash flow but it is in line with this little bit more of payables and everything but 1.5 billion and if we take into a template kroger 1.5 billion cash flow let's say they grow at 2% let's say 3% they they grow over the next 10 years discount rate 10 then intrinsic value is a 21 billion if you look at the market cap 23 billion so the intrinsic value offer us to close 10% return if they keep growing at 3% which makes kruger the cheapest stock in the environment in the best case scenario okay 3% putting this back to 2% but still the change isn't there still it but still the change isn't there because the cash flows are already significant 7% 6 7% plus 2% growth then if we put a higher multiple that is also expected if you look at the quality of business in the future if we put higher multiple then we are even higher there is a market average so you can expect 10 discount 10 return even if this higher prices and now before we discuss the intrinsic value of tesla the robot taxis the whatever let me go back to the peter lynch if you read his book technology companies are always very risky and we will discuss in the valuation of tesla but who benefit most from technology companies are companies that use the technology later so kroger could be the technology user robot taxi delivering my grocery my everything so that i don't have to go there etc so they have the infrastructure they have everything they might really benefit thanks to their scale to whatever might be the future there so yes it is a boring supermarket company but you never know what will happen in the future so we might even increase that growth rates in the best case scenario but that just again about the future and investing is about assumption and let's see the assumption about tesla so we look at, we look at the huge revenue growth i know that elon musk says tesla or something like that because he is from south africa and i say tesla and if there is anything about stock i say right about the stock then it is the pronunciation nikola tesla was born in croatia Uh, let us continue with the analysis so we have a revenue amazing revenue growth staggering operating cash flow finally turn into positive and i am looking here okay they say free cash flow 2 billion on a 28 billion in a revenue if they can keep this margin they also say they will improve the margins okay what i can take into the calculation and see how this will work they have for now what is the free mod i think i know that the tesla fan boys have better knowledge but let's just do the exercise they can say one new ones plus more in a construction they can easily double triple and ten triple their production in the next year especially as you can get 5 billion just like that with minimal dilution and they say also they will increase their profit margin i am looking here at staggering growth 5x growth over the 3 years so we have earnings we have a cash flow that have turned positive 
So what I'm going to use here with Tesla, I'm going to use, okay, uh, let's say 2 billion in a cash flow, but Tesla is a growth stock. As we have seen, they want to invest more in a growth, more in factories. So every available time that they have will be invested in a growth, not returned to shareholders. So if they grow 40% per year over the next 10 years, yes, then the only thing we can calculate here as a valuation for Tesla, because we don't expect dividend before they go to Mars. So for the joke, I cannot refrain myself. We don't expect dividend. So this valuation here should be deleted. So because we that's not rewarding shareholders yet. So if you look at the Tesla, and they continue to grow at 40% per year. So everything is focused on a growth then at 10% discount rate. So if we expect 10 return, we are at intrinsic value of 477 billion. So if you put 7 normal with the terminal multiple of 30, we can put 40. Uh, if your company growing at 40, still then deserve even higher 60. We are at 1.2 trillion compared to the current 600 billion market cap. That is still double over the next 10 years. Of course, base case scenario, they might grow even faster. We can put here, I don't know, 80. And that's then again the quintuple possible. If Elon managed to do this, then when you look at this estimation, it is always good to look at the market. So if they grow 40 over the next 10 years, then their sale grow from 4 lakh cars to 11 million cars in a 10 years, not in a 20 years, in a 10 years. Okay, that is possible 80 million cars sold per year on average globally, they would have then 50%. They are not only doing cars, they will do trucks, they will do this, they will do ride, they will do rap. Will Elon Musk do it? Depends on Elon Musk. So we have seen also the risk just tweeted how Apple didn't want to buy them when they are close to bankruptcy a few years ago. So that was just few years ago from bankruptcy to high stock price, high capital to profit is partially explained stock price explosion here. So if they keep, keep growing like this, if you go back to what template, worst case scenario is always good to keep in a mind. Let's say that is a growth rate falls to I don't know 20 and it the, then just a 10. You expect the discount rate of 10, the multiple goes down to 25. Then we are at and the delete the present value because we are not seeing the dividend. Then the present value is 70, that's the 90. Possible decline that is also possible if the growth rates what back into the price. Thanks for watching. Uh, if I was able to give you what you were looking for, then please smash the subscribe button and share the content with your friends and family members. Our agenda is to increase the financial literacy in India. So please contribute your part and support the channel. Thank you. Till then, Jai Hind.